Hi, and welcome to Next Level Carpentry. This video is going to show how I glue up the square hollow waist section of these newel posts that I'm working on. The posts are nearly complete as I shoot this video, so you can see what this square section looks like after the glue up process that I'm going to show in this video. You'll see how I set up the four pieces to get them ready for gluing, and then use Merrill band clamps to apply amazing pressure to all four joints equally at the same time. With accurate miters and type bond three glue, the result is an extremely strong newel post with glue joints that are actually stronger than the birch wood itself. To learn how you can get professional results like this for projects you're working on, just hang out in a shop for a bit and I'll show you how. Well, this is always one of the more exciting stages of a project. Going through all the process of making the coves, cutting the bevels, getting all these things mitered and planed up and ready to glue. And that's when stuff really starts to take shape. I'll be doing some more work on these pieces later, probably in a different video. But for now, I'm gluing up the waist sections for the centers of these newel posts, like you can see in the SketchUp model. I already went through the process with one of them using these Merley clamps on loan once again from Yeehaw. Once again on loan from my good friend Jared at Legacy Construction. And they work fantastic for gluing up stuff like this. Another perk of having a wood stove on the premises is that I can set these parts near the wood stove and that glue dries up marvelously in a pretty short period of time. So that's number one. I've got three full ones to glue up. And I'm going to run through the second one right here. And after I get all the pieces cut up and beveled and looking good, I lay out all the pieces and then select them for the best matchup on the edges so that the posts will look more consistent when they're finished. And this will be number three. This guy is number two. When the post wraps together in that edge and that edge, fit up to each other, they'll look good too. And the clamps are great for holding this together, but getting it all set up and glued together so that I can put the clamps on it can be pretty unwieldy. On the making round cylinders video where I was gluing up hexagons, I used biscuit joints in every miter to help line things up. But for these posts, I've only got four sides and I don't want to put in all those biscuits. The glue joint will be more than strong enough once I get it set up. So the trick I use for this is I just take a piece of this good 3M masking tape. That's not the 10 rolls for a buck that you get at the big box store. It's the good 3M suitable for one inch use. And the trick to this is to overlap the miter ever so slightly on each piece. That's, you know, 32nd of an inch, not a 16th. And I just lay these guys out. Actually, I want to move the tape up here. Same difference, I'm lining up one end, more or less. These will all get trimmed off after they're glued. I left them long for the, exactly that purpose. No matter how good the tape is, it's no good with sawdust on it. So I'm going to take another piece, start it right there, and overlap this joint. And I'm putting this piece slightly on top of that piece. And letting the tape bridge the gap. Do the same thing as I go across the boards, and making the lap go the same way each time. And then there's a tail of tape on there on purpose. I'll do this twice. Second one's generally a little easier to set up. I want to have a pretty consistent lap on there. It wants to fight me right there a little bit. That's all right. And these miters, if I slid my finger on here, I'd slice my finger open. These things are razor sharp after coming off the joiner. So I don't want to overlap those edges too much so that these corners will flake off. There's a little forgiveness when those corners are glued up. They'll get sanded ever so slightly round, but I don't want those things flaking off at this stage of the game. Now that I've got that set up, just slide these boards up and over. Well, like I said, this is manageable with four pieces. With six pieces, I kind of go about it a different way. And this is kind of a sloppy, messy procedure, no matter how you do it. But I don't want any sawdust or crumbs down in any of these joints. So 
I'll move the camera for this part. So I want to glue this up and I'll put the glue right down in the very bottom. And I'll put in a respectable bead and then as I fold this up the masking tape stretches and the pressure in the joint distributes the glue. I want to make sure that that bottom has got 100% coverage farther up here. It's less important when this gets clamped together. The glue will squeeze out in this joint. <clears throat> but even if there was a little void up in there, it wouldn't hurt anything. It's on the inside of the column. It's not going to sacrifice the strength. But I do that for each of the joints, making sure I've got all the coverage I need. If I have any doubts, I'll just lay a little more right on that top miter. I'll end up just peeling that out later. It's going to be good coverage. This last joint, because I don't have the hinge action for distributing the glue, I put two beads on this last one. Too much glue is way better than not enough. It all cleans up in the wash, making a mess. I've got a whole garbage can of sawdust over here for cleanup. I use this tail of masking tape to carefully close that last miter. I'm not worried about any glue squeeze out on the exterior of this piece because it's very easy to clean up in this process. So there I've got a good glue everywhere. As you can see, it's a mess. Take some sawdust and mop this up for the interim. It's time to add the clamps. It takes a little finesse to get all those jaws where they need to be. But for the way they perform, it's worth any amount of effort to get that done. So I'm just sliding these up a couple inches so that it doesn't over pinch the corners and start out with just modest clamping pressure to get things headed in the right direction. I want to make sure that at least one of the clamps is at 90 degrees to the others so that I can use the pressure to even up the column to make sure it's perfectly square in the end. So I'll use the middle clamp for that purpose. I suppose if I did this all day every day I'd be a little more graceful at getting things positioned but as it is I'm not going to win any awards for clamp positioning. The columns are going to come out so good I don't care. I don't need a graceful clamping trophy on the wall. I need nice looking columns. Video editing is a lot of work, but this is one of the instances when I really like to hit the fast forward button because it makes me look so much more efficient than I am. All right, I got all three clamps in position. I can start to bear down on those guys. You can see glue squeeze out on all the corners all the way around. That's a wonderful thing. And because each clamp can apply so much pressure, any one of them is enough crank this column out of square against the resistance of the other two. So I just want to make sure that everything's coming out perfectly square with this machinist square. And you'll have to take my word for it. But that's perfect. And there are lock miter router bits for this sort of thing. Some people spline them, add biscuits, all that. But with those miters so tight, the surface is so smooth and accurate, that glue joint is bomb proof. I'll try to get a shot down the middle of the tube. You can see glue squeeze out on the inside, glue squeeze out on the outside. It's all good. Now if the clamps are doing their job and everything's square, I'll just pull this tape off. And there's other clamping methods for doing this, but man, I can't imagine doing it without Merle clamps. Now I just use a sharp putty knife for cleaning up, up excess glue on these. Anybody that watches my videos knows that I don't touch my glue up projects with a wet rag. I scrape this glue off while it's wet before it gets crusty anyways with a sharpened putty knife and it just makes for a wonderful project in the end. These columns will get stained with a dark brown stain. The last thing I want is a bunch of smudges on there for mopping the thing with a wet rag for Pete's sake. It's cleaned up pretty nice. And this is going to be hard to see and it's really not essential whatsoever, but I made this little acute angled scraper on a long stick. I can slide it down inside the column and pull that glue squeeze out out of that inside corner. And somebody could certainly argue that that excess glue actually just makes the column stronger. And I wouldn't fight him on it. But I kind of wanted to have that cleaned out. Originally I was going to slide a support post out inside these to stiffen them up during the installation. But my aforementioned friend Jared gave me an idea for a very secure and bomb proof installation that doesn't involve 
slipping a steel post inside here. I'll include that part in another video in the future so you can see a very slick option for securing these posts to an existing floor in a remodeling situation. But the installation will be covered in another video. Right now I've got to let the glue set up on this waste section, glue up the other one, and I'll do a video segment for fitting and gluing up these cove sections that fit on the bottom and the top of this waste section. So it's a whole set of videos to cover the process plus a bunch of other tidbits here and there. So I hope you'll find stuff in these videos that you could appreciate and put to use on the projects you're doing. Well, now that you've seen the process I use for making the square hollow center sections for these box newel posts, I'll wrap up this video and get it uploaded before moving on into others in this series. And I apologize for the awkward segue into and out of this particular video. The workflow for efficiently going through the steps for making all the parts for these newel posts is kind of at odds with the video production process to show all those steps, and both of the activities kind of suffer from it. The next video in this rather poorly knit series is going to show some subtle but effective methods that I use for producing accurate, consistent results for making these parts. And I'll show how to set up and cut the perfect miter joints for these assemblies before they're glued up. There's a few tricks for getting the pieces a consistent width and size with accurate angles on all the pieces. And I really want to thank all of you whose feedback and support are helping Next Level Carpentry grow to its own next level. Without involvement from you, this whole thing is going nowhere. So everything that you do in the way of sharing and spreading the word about this channel is making a noticeable difference, and I really appreciate it. When I look at the graphs and charts on YouTube Analytics and see steady progress, it encourages me to continue doing the work I love and to share it with others who are passionate about carpentry. And so, until another time, thanks for watching. Thank you.